is Tuesday, January the 31st, 2017, and this is your Barbados Today afternoon update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, Governor General Sir Elliot Belgrave is disappointed that motorists seem not to be learning lessons from the various road fatalities occurring in Barbados. Commenting on Sunday's horrible accident, which took the lives of three Vincentians and a Barbadian at Graham Hall, Sir Elliot told reporters after visiting centenarian Rosalie Bailey in Hegel Hall, St. Michael this morning, that he was also particularly distressed that the victims were in the prime of their lives. The loss of life of anyone always distresses me. But when it affects young people who have yet started, it is very distressing. I thought the crash that took place near that court a couple of years ago, I have taught young people a lesson that when they go back in, they would ensure that they have somebody safe to take them home. I understand that a chap from the friend took them down. It might well have been better that he took them and left them and come back farther. I don't know what the root cause is for the crash, but somebody was at fault somewhere along the line. I don't know what is the cause of the crash, but somebody slipped up and caused the death of these four people, which is very distressing. And I regret it. I sent condolences to his family. Some 250 poverty-stricken households across Barbados will soon receive help from the Front of Stewart administration. It's because the Ministry of Social Care has entered into a loan agreement with the Inter-American Development Bank to do just that. The loan will fund the execution of a project called Strengthening Human and Social Development in Barbados. The main objective of this project is to contribute to the reduction of extreme poverty by catering to the 250 households as well as cutting unemployment. The unemployment reduction component will be achieved through technical training and career guidance to 8,000 Barbadians. Project coordinator Maureen Pollard says the success of this initiative would depend on effective and efficient collaboration of all stakeholders for the delivery of services to the beneficiaries. A student of Princess Margaret Secondary School has disappeared. Police say 16-year-old Zalisha Simon from Welch Village, St. John, was last seen by her mother yesterday morning at around 6.30 when she left home for school. Now, Zalisha was wearing the school uniform at the time. She is of slim build, dark complexion, and wears a black medium length hair in an Afro style. She has an abrupt manner, and Zalisha Simon frequents Mylors Hill, Silver Hill, and Bourne's Land, Silver Sands. In sports now, West Indies all-rounder Andrea Russell has been banned for one year from cricket by an independent anti-doping panel in Kingston, Jamaica. The ban, which was handed down this morning, is effective from today. Patrick Foster, Russell's lawyer, confirmed the development and said he would discuss all options with his client, including appealing the ban. Now, Russell had been charged for missing out on filing his whereabouts on three occasions in 2015. Missing three tests in a 12-month period amounts to a failed dope test under the World Anti-Doping Agency guidelines. There's regional and international news after this short break. Read all about it, read all about it. Get your paper. Only 225, let's get your paper. Are you again with that stale news from yesterday? I got the barbers today at on my phone and I just get my news for free. What do she? The Barbados Today, news you can trust. In news from the region now, the Guyana Defence Force says it remains committed to the preservation of law and order amid allegations that three soldiers were involved in raping a 15-year-old girl. While the GDF statement did not disclose when or where the alleged rape took place, media reports in Ghana said the incident occurred last Saturday at Camp Stevenson in Temeri. Police say they are investigating the matter and the GDF said a board of inquiry has since been convened to ascertain the facts and to determine whether the crime was committed. 
On the global front, British MPs will debate whether U.S. President Donald Trump should be granted a U.K. state visit as a petition against the idea nears 1.7 million signatures. The debate on February 20th will also take in a second petition calling for the visit to go ahead, signed by more than 100,000 people. Trump has imposed a temporary U.S. travel ban on people from seven mainly Muslim countries. This prompted demonstrations across the U.S. yesterday. Meanwhile, President Trump begins his 11th day in office, shrouded in crisis, wrongly criticized for a chaotic unveiling of immigration measures and under new scrutiny after he fired the nation's top law enforcement officer who refused to enforce them. In an extraordinary move, President Trump firing acting attorney general Sally Yates. Her dismissal coming via hand-delivered letter, only hours after she stood in defiance of the president's travel ban. Yates writing in a letter she is not convinced the executive order is lawful, citing the solemn obligation of the Department of Justice to always seek justice and stand for what is right. We had a Monday night massacre. Sally Yates, a person of great integrity, who follows the law, was fired. The White House attacking the career prosecutor, claiming Yates betrayed the Department of Justice and is weak on borders after she instructed the Justice Department not to defend the president's executive order on immigration and refugees. Immediately following the swearing-in of new acting attorney general Dana Bente, Yates's replacement rescinding her guidance right away, directing the Department of Justice to, quote, defend the lawful orders of our president. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.tbb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, our screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.